This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this video, we're going to start to look at UV mapping. Now, UVs are points on a surface that describe a mappable area. Essentially, they provide a holdout area for images to be placed. You could think of them as a clean sheet of paper that's wrapped around your polygon object. We're going to look at UVs by mapping or laying out the UVs for our Crow model. I'm going to open that up where we left off. And here's our Crow, and we still have all of our transforms and all of our history still on there. I'm going to get rid of that before I start laying those UVs out. So I'll choose Modify, Freeze Transformations, clear those, and then we'll choose Edit, Delete by Type, and History to get rid of all of that history that we had in building the model. Now it's clean, it's ready to go for UV layout. I'm going to open the UV Texture Editor, and this is our primary window for laying out UVs. Let's go full screen with that and take a look at what we have in here. Our goal is to create human readable UVs. And what this means is that these points here, or these lines that we're seeing, should form pieces and parts of our crow. And we should be able to look at them and see what parts those are. So, for instance, we should see a shape of the crow's wing, maybe even a profile of the crow's head, and be able to look at these UVs and be able to tell which parts are what. Now, inside our UV texture editor, we have a large grid, and one section of it is shaded a darker gray. This area here is our UV texture space, and it has a value from 0 to 1. The bottom is the U direction, and you can see there's another value from 0 to 1 going in the V direction. This gray area here is where we actually want our UVs to reside. But as we're working, we can place those UVs anywhere we want within this infinite space. But in the end, we'll move them back to this center space here. Our UVs should have values that range from 0 to 1. And this is called normalized texture space. And that's why we'll just push everything into this area once we're finished laying the UVs out. The first part of the crow that we're going to map will be its wing. We're only going to lay the UVs out for half of this model, as we do have some tools that enable us to mirror the UVs. So we only need to build half of that. Now, in order to lay the UVs out, we must have faces selected. So here I'm selecting just the wing and only one of those wings, but I do have the front and back of the wing selected here. Now, the rule for laying out UVs is that we want our selection to match our projection. And what this means is that we have a set of projection tools, and these tools will project the UVs back onto the surface. So our selection should match the type of projection that we're using. For instance, as we look at this model here, the wing is relatively flat. That would be a planar projection. And that's that very first option there. Let's dock this window as well so we can see these. But then we have other parts of the crow, like the leg, where if I wanted to lay the UVs out for it, I would select those faces there, and 
my selection forms a cylindrical type object, which is similar to a leg. Even a human leg is a cylinder type object. So with that, we would use a cylindrical map. Let's go back to our wing and we'll look at the options for planar mapping. We can project the UVs in any one of our axes, or we could choose to project based upon our camera view. In this particular case, projecting through the camera would be our best bet because the wing does not really reside in any one of these axes. It's actually kind of cutting through multiple axes because of the angle that it's at. So a camera projection would work best. Instead of using the camera projection under the planar mapping options, I'm going to close that and look back at my Create UVs menu. And down underneath here, we have Create UVs based on camera. So we can use this option. Now, they're both very close, but we do get slightly different results, whether we're using the planar mapping option or using Create UVs based on camera option. I do prefer the Create UVs based upon camera. I think we get a better overall scale with our projection. I'm going to rotate my camera so that I am looking at the wing in its most planar view. And there it looks pretty flat. I'm seeing all of my faces there, with of course the exception of what's on the back of the wing. And we'll choose Create UVs based on camera. Click that. And now in our UV texture editor, we can see that my UVs are now projected. Inside my UV texture space, I'm going to go over my projected UVs, right click, and choose UV. This just brings up that marking menu, and it's just our selection marking menu. And then I can select all the UVs. Now, because we have to have faces selected when we do our projection of the UVs, what ends up showing up here in the UV texture editor are faces. So we just need to change that selection to be UVs, and you can see that selection mask up here. With my selection changed, I can now select just the UVs. When I select the UVs, all of the other mapped UVs will show up. Now, only the ones that are on the model itself. So even if I have multiple models here, only the UVs on the model that I have selected would pop up in the back. So I'm going to move this just off into empty space. And the reason for doing that is to make it less confusing. I do have other UVs here. These are kind of junk UVs. They belong to the crow, but they're UVs that are not human readable. We have no idea what these are, and they're just kind of a remnant from creating the crow from a cube. And we can select these as well. We can choose all these UVs here. And if I go back to my viewport, you can see that, well, it's the rest of the crow that is all just kind of piled up here in these cube shapes. Eventually, all of this will go away and it will all look more like our crow. Again, we'll just ignore all of that and just come back to our wing. And we want to take this now and break it up. Let's close this window. And the reason why I want to break it up is because we have overlapping UVs. I have the front of the wing, and I have the back of the wing stacked on top of each other. We need to separate these so that we can paint or add texture to them separately or individually. If we kept them there, then they would show the same exact image. It's not really what we want. Sometimes we do want that, but in this particular case, we don't. Uh, we can use overlapping images or place the UVs on top of one another to show the same image, just as long as it's of the same thing. But we want to separate these. So I'm going to switch to an edge selection, and I'm going to double click here, which is the center line of my wing. Just double click that. And now that's selected 
basically the center line for the entire crow, which is okay. I'm going to switch back to my UV texture editor. And I want to cut along those edges. Now you can see that there's a lot of other edges chosen over here. But again, these are our garbage UVs, so I don't really care what happens to them. And so I'm really ignoring everything here for right now. If I had already mapped these, then I'd have a problem. And I'd have to go back and just deselect those. But nothing else is mapped yet. So the only thing we need to focus on is what's over here, and that's just my wing. With that edge row selected, I'll come up here and choose the Cut UV Tool or the Separate UV Tool. And if you look under the Polygons menu, you'll find the same tool right here, which is called Cut UV Edges. The shortcut icon is the scissors right there. We'll choose that. And now it just separated, it just cut all of those edges. And because we selected a row that split that wing perfectly in half, it did separate the front of the wing from the back of the wing. I'll right click now and change my selection back to UV. And I'll just click on a single UV. Now, I don't really know if that UV is on the front of the wing or the back of the wing, but we'll find out shortly. I'm going to choose Select and choose Select Shell. Now, a shell is the collection of UVs that are attached to each other. And as I move that off to the side, you can see we have two distinct shells. Each of these shells represent either the front or the back. Now, I have right here selected the back of my wing. And I can select all of these UVs. Those are the front to my wing. Now, if we grab just a single UV and pull it, that's going to cause all sorts of problems. We don't want to do that. We want to make sure that we leave the UVs together as much as possible. My next step is to smooth these UVs out. Maya gives us a couple of tools to do that, but the best one is called the Unfold tool. That's located here, and we have Unfold Options. Let's take a look at those real quick. With the Unfold tool, its purpose is to move the UVs into a position that closely reflects the original mesh. Since the UVs have to be flattened into a 2D version of a 3D object, it's very easy for them to stretch or to warp. And this will cause that same stretching and warping to show up in any images that we paint or textures that we apply to the surface. The Unfold tool minimizes that distortion as long as the UV shell, again, this being our shell, can be freely unwrapped. Being freely unwrapped means that it's not going to overlap onto itself and that it has enough internal space to spread out so it can lay out nicely. Let's reset the settings here. We have just our default, and the defaults work pretty well for most of our UV shells. The main one to look at right now is our pinning, and we're pinning UVs, and the UVs that we are pinning are the ones that are unselected. So that's going to be this guy over here. By having those unselected UVs pinned, we're not going to affect those, and the only things that we will affect are what I do have selected. Let's just use the defaults, and we'll choose Apply and Close. That actually flipped that over so that it was in a decent space, and it did lay them out a little bit. It separated them. Now we also have the Smooth UV tool. When I click on this, it brings up two different operations. It brings up the unfold or the relax operation. Now we just used unfold on this, but we can check to see if it needs to be unfolded even more or if unfolding it more would help the surface. To use the smooth tool, 
we just click on the one we want. And these are two separate tools. So I'm gonna click on unfold, and then I can just scroll left to right. And you can see just that slight change. When I scroll to the right, it alters my surface just a little bit. So that helped just get rid of a little bit of distortion. And if I bring it back the other way, it just undoes that command. So we're just gonna bring it back and leave that there. Let's select this shell. And I won't choose unfold through the polygon menu this time. Let's just use unfold through the smooth tool. And again, I'll left click onto the unfold word itself and then scroll to the right. A little bit more of a change there since we started with this tool. And there's it undone and I'll just slide it over. And now that closely matches my geometry and should not have any distortion. Let's take a break with looking at the UVs for now and we'll come back to this.